Well, that really wasn't the sort of performance we were expecting there against Norwich, but it's the result that we wanted. Manchester United 1-0 winners against Norwich at Carrow Road, thanks to who else, man? But Cristiano Ronaldo banging in a penalty. I was like, Tim Krul, don't save it, don't save it. Don't. He didn't save it. United 1-0 winners in a game, let's be honest, we were not very good at all. There are so many questions to come from that game. If we were that good organized and drilled after Crystal Palace, one training session, how can we go from that to what we saw there against Norwich? Ultimately, it doesn't matter. But Christ, right? The last two games, it goes to show how different the, how different the same result can be. Both 1-0 games, both two completely different types of 1-0s. Ragnick has always been talking about control, control, control. Today, against Norwich, a team, let me remind you, had only scored eight goals in the Premier League this season. We had no control of that game at all. Our front four, all of them, were pretty damn poor the entire game. Of course, Ronaldo came up with that clutch moment. But Rashford, what was that performance? Jadon Sancho, a bit invisible. Bruno Fernandes, so much wasted possession, all of them. And if we saw against Crystal Palace this sort of intensity, winning the ball in the opposition's half, playing as a unit over, you know, two-on-ones that we're getting on defenders to force mistakes, we saw a completely different style. And that, that confused me, I'll be completely honest. I was expecting a real continuity of the system that we saw against Crystal Palace. I was hoping it was going to be even better. But what happened? Were the players overtrained this week? Were we playing a tactically a different system? Because that wasn't Ragnik ball at all. There was no real control. There was no real intensity. There was no real pressure. United slow in possession, cumbersome football. You didn't really know where the goal was going to come from. And then it came from Ronaldo's penalty. But it was definitely a penalty. Max Aaron's basically putting Ronaldo in a headlock. Ridiculous decision from him. But we'll take it. Liverpool won because of a penalty. Chelsea won because of a penalty. City won because of a penalty. United won because of a penalty. Is what it is. But Ronaldo, man, he's come up clunch, whether it's Atalanta, whether it's Villarreal, or whether it's Norwich today. He's come up clutch and he keeps scoring massive goals for Manchester United. And that one was huge. And it means now that we've got three games under Ragnik. We've got two games with his first team, two 1 0 wins, back to back clean sheets. What is this sorcery? But the only reason we got a clean sheet today was because of David De Gea. If I go over here and look at the match stats, they've gotten down as an 8.2. I would probably go higher than that on David De Gea. He was absolutely sensational today. And the only reason we won that game 1 0. As I said, if you're looking at the game against Crystal Palace as a 1-0, pure control, never really threatened that much. Where was their goal going to come from? You just didn't know. Today, Norwich had so many opportunities. And if they were more clinical, we would not have won that game. But in the same way, if Manchester United's front four were more clinical, we would have had plenty more goals in that game. Jadon Sancho, Marcus Rashford. I have no idea how Marcus Rashford lasted 90 minutes. I'll be completely honest. I have no idea. It confused the hell out of me. He, I thought he was going to come back from injury and sort of be revitalized, reborn. But he looks absolutely a shadow of himself. And Bruno Fernandes, again, was one of those performances where everybody in the front four, all the basic stuff, we couldn't do the basic passes. Just like, he's right there, mate. What are you doing? Ridiculous. Someone who I thought played very well today and somebody who I know gets criticized so heavily, surprising when he plays well is Scott McTominay. And today is what I'm trying to be, ex I've, I've explained so, so often on this channel. His passing range is good. He was so many of those like really sharp, low, hard passes, switching play, did it a lot. What he's not as good at is intricate, quick, one-touch football in the middle. But today he's got McTominay out of possession. He does what he always does. In possession, I thought he was good today. And in a game where so many players were not at the races, I thought McTominay played quite well. And Fred, Scott McTominay and Fred, they helped that organization, right? But saying that, we conceded quite a few clear-cut chances. As I said, you do that against Brentford on Tuesday, we're not, we're not coming away with a 1-0 one, one win. We're not coming away with a clean sheet. I think Brentford would punish us more. Not that Brentford are in, like, a massively incredible by comparison, but they're not rock bottom of the Premier League with eight goals. United were overall, that was not Ralph Ragnick ball, was it? And that is a bit of a concern, right? I, was, I, I expected there to be a real continuity, even if the results didn't come, that you would just watch it. It's what Radnick is talking about. You know, as a coach, you want to be able to imprint your ideas on a team so that when, when somebody looks at it, they just know it's, it's a Ralph Ragnick team. And we saw that against Crystal Palace. But today, I really don't think we did. As I said, is that down to a tactical decision by Ragnick to like sort of lay off Norwich a bit, play with less intensity? But it makes no sense, really, because we had one training session for Palace and we played very well the first half, for sure. And then we've had a week's 
worth of training. We've had the whole players were rested for the Young Boys game. Everything was perfect for us in the build-up to this match. But it just wasn't there. The intensity wasn't there in the front four. The high press wasn't working. Uh, the midfield press, we uh, Scott McTominay and Fred did okay there. But we, as I said, we conceded quite a few options. Uh, chances, sorry. Uh, one thing I want to say is I hope that Victor Lindelof is completely fine. Uh, went off clutching his chest. Looked like some sort of chest pains he was getting. Fingers crossed there's nothing there. Lindelof and Maguire. Uh, the defence played okay today. Full backs wise. I thought Delot and Tellez, they were okay. But I think they need to they need to play better than that in this system. I, I think they play better against Crystal Palace. But again, they're going to be starting against Brentford. I think I'm, in three days' time, right, we play Brentford. So are we going to see rotations? Are we going to see changes? From that, again, there you can't play Marcus. You can't start Marcus Rashford. I don't know how Marcus Rashford starts against uh, Brentford. That shouldn't happen. Definitely not. It should be it should be Mason Greenwood. But Cristiano Ronaldo, man, he was booed by the not. Man, they literally only came to see Cristiano Ronaldo. There's a picture going around of the. Norwich fans recording Ronaldo's penalty. He literally only came to see Ronaldo. He came up clutch in a game. They always say it's, just, it's the hallmark of champions, isn't it? Winning when you're playing badly. And that is a different sort of win. I expected United to come out much more intense at the start. I also expected United to be much more intense after the halftime team talk. Neither of which we were. And it looked like a game where as the further it went on, you're thinking... I don't like the look of this. I don't like the feel of this. I kind of felt that Norwich were going to... By the way, Billy Gilmore was definitely their best player. I thought he did very well in the middle. Uh, dropping off as a deeper line playmaker. Cracking little talent. And I, I think we kind of struggled to stop him. And we didn't get close enough to him because Fred and McTominay were playing slightly deeper. Our whole line was deeper than it was against Crystal Palace. It allowed Norwich to come forward. And it meant that we didn't have as much... The, the, the degree of control that we had in that game was far less. Ultimately... It doesn't matter. Football is a results-driven business and Ragnick in his first three games has delivered the results. Two wins in the Premier League, two clean sheets, up to equal West Ham now on points and fourth. Our goal differences are a few off. I think we're I think they're like plus nine. I think we're plus two now after that game. But happy days, man, because the result is there. And in these early stages where he's embedding himself in the club, where he's embedding the system into the players and into the squad, we just need results. Because we, we, the, as long as the results continue, then there won't be any pressure or anything on, on Ralph Rannick. It will allow him to focus and concentrate on what he wants to do. I was confused as to where that system was and where that system disappeared to, right? Were the players overtrained this week? That would, be, that would seem poor. Were, were, were the players playing a different system? That would seem weird because of how he played against Crystal Palace. I didn't really understand it. As I said, the front four wasn't pressing as a unit. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Because United now, with two consecutive clean sheets, Although today, as I said, isn't it amazing how the same result can be such a different game of football? That 1-0 against Palace was total control from United for 80-plus percent of the game. Crystal Palace had a couple of half chances, but not much. It was just a great performance. That there today, largely very poor overall for Manchester United against a team which was and is rock bottom of the Premier League. But we got the penalty, we got the goal, we held on for the clean sheet. David De Gea put in an incredible performance, rightly man of the match. And United come away with three points, just like we did against Crystal Palace. Ralph Brannick will be buzzing about that. I'm buzzing about it, you'll be buzzing about it. I now want to see what happens against Brentford. Uh, yeah, as I said, it shocked me a little bit how different we played today by comparison of how we played against Crystal Palace. But oh, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm repeating myself, but it's a good thing, man. It's a, it's a good thing that we got the result. Ronaldo coming up clutch again. Don't doubt the man. Seriously. Ronaldo's incredible. I cannot wait to see who we get in the Champions League round of 16 and what Ronaldo can do for us in that tournament because I can't wait for it. We've got a couple of months between now and then. Let's see how this Ragnik system progresses. But if we saw a massive step forward with the overall performance against Crystal Palace, that there was a half a step back. Obviously, we kept the clean sheet. Good. But that was more to do with De Gea's heroics rather than stopping Norwich having clear-cut chances because they did have plenty. Ronaldo came up with a goal. Cool. That's all that mattered. But the front four, Sancho, Rashford, Ronaldo's played quite a lot as well. And Bruno Fernandes, it was bad. There was no cohesion between it. That needs to be better. Far, far better than that. Where was the intensity? That is what I hope Ragnick's going to be asking the players because there's lots of questions and lots to look back on from this game to learn from. Ultimately, got that goal. And I've said ultimately about six times. So ultimately, I'm going to call this the end of the match reaction. But I've got a big smile on my face. Saturday night, United 1-0 winners. The second game in a row. Six points from Ragnick's first two Premier League games and two clean sheets. Realistically, you can't ask for more than that.
Brentford next, then Brighton, then a break with Christmas. What are you what are you expecting? And what was your reaction to that game today? But mate, Ronaldo. Viva Ronaldo. <laughs> Viva Ronaldo indeed. 